Americans and others. I am Green Bear, future president of these United States. But I have a problem. There's a problem? <laughs> I heard there's a problem. Everything was fine like 12 seconds ago. Green Bear, what's wrong? Uh, don't the dinosaur, the White House is very big and I don't know everything about it. Elections are still a little bit mysterious to understand. I haven't memorized all the presidents yet. And, yes, I'm hungry. Well, Green Bear, I'm about to solve three out of four of your problems because Fly Guy presents the White House. Oh, oh, I love Fly Guy. But, but uh, how, how does he know stuff about the White House? Flies get around. Well, where did the dinosaur go? Oh, I am back, and I have solved one out of four of your problems. Uh, you got me a cookie? A cookie. You're the best friend that any bear could ever have. I even took a bite to make sure it was good. All right, you two, go sit down because we're about to get presidential. Let's see here, Fly Guy presents the White House because I don't know if you know this, but Fly Guy is a V-I-F, a very important fly. A boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy and Fly Guy could say, the boy's name, Buzz. True story. Buzz and Fly Guy walked through the gates of the White House. Cool, said Buzz. This is where the President of the United States lives and works. Fly Guy did a loop-de-loop. -loop. He was excited, so he zoomed ahead of Buzz and flew inside. He's going to get the scoop for us. A scoop of ice cream? In, no, a scoop as in, like advanced information that he will then share with us. Oh, I got it, yup, yup, yup. The address of the White House is 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the most famous address possibly in the whole world. It is located in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, and hundreds of people work at the White House every day. There's the Secret Service, the Chief of Staff, the Press Secretary, speechwriters who write the speeches, and several advisors who work with the president and give him really good advice, and a team of chefs, butlers, maids, florists, electricians, Plumbers, they keep the place running smoothly. There's even a beekeeper. A beekeeper, who knew? The president is the leader of the United States and the head of our government. The president also represents our country around the world and is the leader of the armed forces. Right here we see a picture of a real president, President Johnson, in Vietnam back in the 60s. The president's family is called the first family. The president's wife is called the first lady. And she welcomes guests to the White House for ceremonies and special events. And if a president is not married, a friend or a relative may act as first lady. And here's one of the first ladies, Eleanor Roosevelt, greeting some kids. And here's Jackie Kennedy greeting some important people from around the world. And when a woman is elected president, a husband, friend, or relative may fill this role. First lady? It seems like Fly Guy's getting some ideas. I already picked my first lady. She's a teacher in New Jersey. She loves me. Oh, but can I still be your first best friend, Dr. Dinosaur? Yes. I am counting on you. I will be there for you. Every four years, Americans vote in a presidential election, and any American citizen who is 18 or older can vote, including presidential candidates. Here we see a line of voters, and here we see Barack Obama, one of our past presidents, casting his own vote. Uh, storyteller. Yes, Green Bear. Uh, yeah, when, when I run for president, can I vote for myself? As a matter of fact, when you run for president, you can vote for yourself. Okay, good, because I was going to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. And here we see, oh, William Taft casting his vote. This was way back in 1908. A Ballot is a list of people who want to be president, and voters in each of the 50 states mark a ballot with a pencil like that to make their vote. 
Whoa, I see that they left a blank space for me. And I'll write your name. <laughs> the candidate who wins the election moves into the White House with his or her family, and then the previous president moves out. And right here, we have the Clinton family moving into the White House while the Bush family moves out. They give them a little tour, tell them where all the good snacks are, you know, give them the basic lay of the land. All of the presidents have had their portraits painted, and many portraits hang in the White House, some are in museums, and here we have Buzz saying, William Harrison was president for only 32 days. Oh, this is gonna be an amazing fun fact to have for a future book report. You heard Buzz say that William Harrison was president for only 32 days. That is the shortest presidency ever, and the longest one was? Franklin Roosevelt, he was president for 4,422 days. So that's a big difference. President Washington, that's George Washington right there, chose the location of the country's new capital city and it was named Washington in honor of him. Here's a portrait of him, Washington makes a plan. And what is Buzz telling us? George Washington lived in New York City while he was president. That's another great fun fact for a future book report, kid, because President George Washington was president living in New York City because Washington, D.C. wasn't ready when Washington was president. There was a contest to design the president's house. In July 1792, a builder named James Hoban won the contest. This is winner. In 1800, President John Adams and his wife Abigail were the first family to move in. He was the second president and the first one to get to actually live in Washington. They lived there for just five months. And then, next president. In 1814, British soldiers set fire to the White House. What? What? Actually, I knew that, but it's shocking every time I hear it. Uh, thank goodness it's back again. Oh, it, it came back. First Lady Dolly Madison saved this famous George Washington painting from the burning building, and then it took three years to rebuild the house. Some people think the White House got its name after the fire, but actually, not true. The White House has always been painted white, and it takes 570 gallons of paint to cover the outside of the building, including the east and west wings. For years, people simply called it the White House, but that was actually just a nickname. President Theodore Roosevelt made the name official in 1901 and then had it added to the stationery, White House. When the White House was first built, it was much smaller than it is today. In 1902, President Teddy Roosevelt, the one who called it officially the White House, had an office built west of the main house. It was a quiet place for him to work away from his six kids. The new section became known as the West Wing. And then in 1909, President Taft built the first Oval Office. Today's Oval Office was built in 1934 and is still the President's Office. And yes, it is actually oval shaped. That's why it's the Oval Office. The Oval Office has four exits. Two of the doors are hidden and blend into the walls. That's where he keeps his bats. No. His emergency cookies. There are no emergency cookies. That's where he keeps his pickle jars. Yup, yup, yup. Okay. Throughout the year, the White House hosts many special events because it's like our house, it's America's house, so they have all kinds of special things like the Easter egg roll. That is the largest event. Kids race across the lawn, pushing hard boiled eggs with spoons. Here are kids in 2009. Here they are in 1953 doing the same thing. Eggs. Hey, fly guy looks pretty excellent as a bunny. Each November, the president saves one turkey from becoming Thanksgiving dinner. I pardon you and you may go live on a farm forever. And then the president leads two special holiday ceremonies, the lighting of the national Christmas tree and the lighting of the national Hanukkah menorah. Oh, Green Bear, you're gonna wanna look at this page. <laughs> oh, it's a map. I definitely have to memorize this one. Today, the White House has 130 
32 rooms and 35 bathrooms. There are four floors, a basement and a sub-basement. That's a basement below the basement. There are 412 doors, 147 windows, 28 fireplaces, eight staircases, three elevators, and somebody who had to go and count all of that. Big house! Sure is, Buzz, and ooh, the East Room is the largest room in the White House. Seven weddings and a prom have been held there. Did they serve bad stew? No. Ugh. The White House isn't just a place to work. The president has fun there too. And you know Green Bear's gonna have fun there. There's a 46 seat movie theater, a bowling alley, a golf putting green, a swimming pool, a tennis court. And because a president can do anything the president wants, President Obama painted lines on that tennis court and turned it into a basketball court, of course. Kids have lived and played in the White House. One time, President Lincoln's son, Tad, let two goats pull him around the house. <laughs> Crazy times. Lots of pets have also lived in the White House. More than a hundred dogs have lived there. Here's Millie, and here's Liberty, and here's Bo, and here's King Timaho, Vicky, and Pasha. The White House has even had alligators. What? President Hoover's son had two pet alligators that liked to crawl around outside. And President John Quincy Adams had a house guest who brought a live alligator to stay at the White House. Well, that's an unusual thing to bring for an overnight visit. President Teddy Roosevelt's kids had a pony, bears, a hyena, a pig, a macaw, cats, dogs, snakes, a badger, kangaroo rats, a flying squirrel, guinea pigs, and more. Wow, it was like they were practically another version of the kid time family. No pet flies? I guess not. Yet. Celebrities visit the White House. That's Elvis Presley visiting President Nixon back in 1970. And here in 1979, we have Pope John Paul II, the first pope ever to visit the White House, and that was Jimmy Carter. And Queen Elizabeth II visited the White House many times. There's a visit in 1957 and another visit in 2007 because she was queen for a very long time. President Jefferson opened the White House to visitors. That's Thomas Jefferson. You know, that fellow who wrote the Declaration of Independence? That guy. He decided free tours to anybody who wants to visit. That's right. We can visit the White House for free. Even Fly Guy has visited. I am famous. You landed on the president's forehead? Apparently, he did. Cheeky. It was such an honor to visit the president's house, Buzz told Fly Guy. Maybe we'll work there one day. Yes. Buzz and Fly Guy could not wait for their next field trip. I got a problem. Again? How can I help? Huh? There are 132 rooms in there. How am I going to pick a bedroom? But there's a special bedroom for the president. Oh. So I don't have to choose? Problem solved. But then, uh, uh, another problem. Uh, will I have a bowling party or a pool party? Why not both? Problem solved. Whoa, my staff, they're really good. I'm gonna be a great president. Get ready, America. <laughs>